Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's been good. It's been good. I've been busy, but it's been nice. I can't complain. Um, busy in a pleasant way, I hope. Oh, yeah, of course. Always in the pleasant way. No, um, today I ran a, a story workshop with um, a university in Sweden remotely, obviously, but um, just introducing them to uh, Twine. Do you know Twine? Do I know Twine? Is it like a game dev platform? It, no, it's um, it's a game engine, but it's a text-based one. So um, yeah, no, I have heard of that. Yeah, so it's super fun. Like if you don't um, if you're interested, because they're already doing a storytelling. Uh, do you know Dan Castro? Maybe. I don't think animator, I've heard that name. No. No. He animator illustrator, really really nice guy. He he's like heading the uh, the module in um, basically like it's all around central around storytelling. In um, I was doing a one day workshop just to show like a, get a crash course in like hey like you can do storytelling in games and you can use Twine to do that without needing to program like lots of like things you can kind of by nice. focused on um, you know decisions and choices you can to effectively um do game design through storytelling. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I've not been up it to was... anything quite as uh, interesting as that. <laughs> How's your week been? Um, I've mostly been getting into Minecraft lately. Um, uh -huh. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> I feel like I still I still need to do that in my life. I kind of held off on it for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, combination of pandemic streaming, um, I've been watching other people play it. Looks fun. Mm. So I, I was uh, motivated to start. Perfect storm. Pretty much. Mm. So, where we're on the third and final part. I think so. I think like uh, because we already did a bit of chapter three before, right? I think we did the party. Yes. I mean we're yes. basically at sixty six percent through. Yes. Um, yes. So, assuming even progression. Yes. She see us through to the end. Mm -hmm. So Sounds yeah, right, I think the last thing, yeah, the last thing we did was uh, we were at Mr. Bo's house and um, Leroy kicked up a stink. Yes. And also, I, I forget her name, the sheriff was being pressured to do oh, something Clara. about him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wanted Frigg to talk the rest of them out of it. Discourage, yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it's um, it's this interesting point in the game because, you know, uh, we've had some pretty big tentpole moments of, um, you know, like drama happen, you know. Um, yeah. And especially at this point, like, you know, it's, it was a bit like, and, you've already, and it's also, you're at this kind of stage of equilibrium where you kind of like, understand like a little bit more about the social sta uh, status of the town you understand the characters a bit so um I, I like chapter three especially at this point because it kind of like for me it kind of feels like it sets into a groove just yeah. before it kind of like you know uh builds up into like the the end game it's giving you that like feeling of comfort mm -hmm. before it tears it away from you Ooh, yes Beth. Fishing, eh? Yes, fishing. <laughs> no was I supposed to know we were going fishing? Hmm. Of course not, no. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to the workshop. Oh, Frig. Good one. Oh, Good yeah, one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah. Beth calling yeah. <laughs> calling the narrative's bluff. Yes, exactly. So like you've done we've done this enough times, come on. Yeah. Like surely you see the pattern by now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Probably going out on the lake. Ingrid was very insistent you joined us. Oh. We'll rub off on Sue. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Oh. Oh. Hmm. 
Alright. I always like this detail how the fact that the boat, like the little pier is just on like Mr. Bow's like Yeah. It's the like it's just next to his house. Did she yeah, she packed too much beer. <laughs> yeah. I was I was wondering. I actually um Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll confess there's there's a, actually a funny uh bug here that there actually isn't the the uh, right side of beer. Mm. Like, uh, boat. <laughs> and we didn't notice until the game shaped it then it was kind of like uh, it's, it's under fine. the seats it's under the seats it's under the, yeah exactly yeah 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 in her pockets <laughs> yes. it, it's the beers in the beers in your like you know in your mind god you see i'm in pain wow yeah yeah this is so our most like shakespearean <laughs> yeah Nice. My beer robe. Oh, of course, they were trailing him along in the water to keep him cool. That thing that yes. people who drink beer know to do. Yes, exactly. I think I've done it once myself. Um, I can see that um, uh, Joe's in the chat with us again, which is uh, really awesome. Um... Hi Joe, and uh, he's uh, just asking if he did the soundtrack to the game. And um, I just want to uh, do a shout out. It's um, Andreas Busk, Andrew, right? Bruce Busk, yeah. yeah, exactly. And uh, he, we hired him um, a little bit. Like I think it was about a year into the production. Like we we brought him on, and then he was just like amazing. He uh, he did such a great job. Like um, of all the records and stuff, he's just like he, he just yeah. And it's cool because he hadn't really worked in games before. He just like a few game jams and stuff. But his background was more like art installations in um, uh, like a theater, the theater stuff. But like he just so the, the stuff that he brought to Elk is just like it's such an awesome soundtrack. Can I do this? And, yes, um, I can. Yes, and this is a bit. This is a, a links to a um, links awakening. Yes. Uh, tribute. Yes. Right. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to turn down the chance to actually catch some... Okay. Oh, I see how it is. Yes. <laughs> I'm not doing that, apparently. All right. If, we, if I can get you off the line, I'll get the... No! Okay. I will also say that Andres, Andres is working on... He's, so he's like a, on, on the team. He's working with us in the next game, and he's doing even cooler stuff. I can't talk about it yet, but like, the stuff he's doing is really exciting. And I'm, it's going to be more music focused. I can say that much. That's cool. Um, my, I mean, my only experience with similar things is hearing about the soundtrack to Tangle Tower, obviously, mm -hmm. where uh, the SFB Games guys like travelled abroad to like witness the orchestra performing it, because <laughs> their composer like he like made the soundtrack in like Fruity Loops or Ableton or whatever it is that. Mm -hmm. Yes. real music people use and that was like okay so and it like apparently already sounded great but then it was like okay now it's going to get played by an actual orchestra wow not not that's... to like um not to like be like oh my game had a bigger soundtrack or anything it's just that's my <laughs> only point of reference <laughs> no 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 i mean that sounds awesome that sounds really really cool <laughs> like i presume i presume um all or most of the stuff on the elk soundtrack is like live recording uh no no it's oh, all okay. just done with uh it's all just done with um uh, I, I'm trying to I, my music lingo is not not up to it's enough but you know it's all done with like you know using real instrument like using like samples and then like you know using okay. the composition so it's is that like is the term patches like is that is that the term maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But like um, the the idea it's, it's supposed to mimic the idea that it is that, that it sounds like a live instrument recording, but um, it would just because he was on his own, it would just take forever to like actually uh, record them on himself that way. Yeah, so yeah. he's just a, a wizard at making things sound like. Uh... So we've got we've got like there's a couple there's a, there's definitely like a, a couple of surprises which were recorded um in the studio, but other than that, um, 
just all like um, computer magic. Mm -hmm. It sound. I mean, it sounds very organic. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So this is like the other side of. Is this the other side of the lake from where we got on the yes. boat? Yes, exactly. Okay. So yeah, oh, I see now. Appreciate that. It's yeah, it's it's bell. not it's not cool to put a bell in a game and not let you ring it. So yes, definitely. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? Good for her. I don't know if you know the, the, the life ring. That's um, a callback to the beginning of the uh, beginning of the game, right next to the boat where the boat arrives. There's um, a um, sign of a missing life ring. A little like you note know, that someone's drawn saying I O U, and that's the that's the life ring. God, that is subtle. I was wondering if there was yes. more to that. Yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> like it's pretty dumb, but <laughs> that's it. Oh, okay. The, uh, for the main island theme, yeah, I think it's it's it, like, it is just the main island theme, but yet yeah, there is lots of slide guitar in it, and it is just uh, yeah, and, like it's really nice. That's his forest. Uh oh, oh Christ! She better just be crying about spilt beers. But I have a feeling. Oh. Oh, what? Holy shit. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Christ. I think this is my, like, favorite part of it. Like, this is one of my favorite parts of the game just because... It just has a lot of things combining one of the real stories we're told with just a little bit of like absurd humor and just like a bit like just yeah oh god i'm gonna have to stitch her fucking head up <laughs> didn't you say your mum was a nurse <laughs> so it's hereditary right that's how it works yeah, exactly yeah yeah yeah. i work with leather oh <laughs> Well, there you go, you caught it. So if I just set. Oh, I see. There you go, yeah. On the bottom it up. <laughs> it's sound effects as well. Yeah. It was fun, like, so with the mini games, with the, the jamming and coming with some of the things, like, some of the mini games took um, a lot longer to get. In this one, I think we just, like, bashed it out. We were just like, oh, we should, like, like do the sewing and, like, Simon, um, the programmer game designer, he, like, basically made this kind of, like, grey box, like, a uh, kind of, like, thing of it doing it. And we're like, hey, that feels fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was a little bit more. Did, did you ever play, um,. There was there was like a series of games that started on the on the DS that was um, mm. I think it was called Trauma Center. You know, it was like a surgeon simulator, um, and yeah, one of the things yeah. you'd frequently have to do was stitch people up. I think this was a little bit more visceral somehow. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, first I hadn't played, but we did like kind of like uh, look up like and look at some kind of uh, references to um, like. Uh, hospital themed kind of like mechanics of things like kind of going okay if you're like sewing someone up then uh what, what would what, what is there anyone else who's done something like that yeah make sure your reference is on point 
Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a specific point of knowledge to know that you would go from top to bottom and like stitch in that pattern. <laughs> God. So you, you come to this pretty place, so you get stood on, you sew her up, and then you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You can't. You've got like a dirty wound. Come on. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, I, like for me, this is so, this so, old, like just like set piece. That just because in between, like there's been so many like, like harsher kind of like, like bigger um, moments. So yeah. having. This be something kind of like you know like stuff still happens but it still has this relatively more has a bit more of like um it feels like an everyday to them like they don't see yeah. but an island they're like okay like so you got your stood on by an elk you sealed it up with a fishing hook yeah that's let's call that monday they say that frig should go home and not help search but also <laughs> there's no way i'm not going to wander around a little bit well, I, oh, I, I have a feeling I won't find much, but... Perhaps in a beer barrel. God. Oh, the door's open. Hello. Am I am I going to be wasting my time if I wander around in here today? Uh, honestly, yes. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you can, you can yeah, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing new, at least. I just want to show, just because we talk about music, this is one of my favourite pieces of music from the soundtrack. Mm. I really love that sad guitar. Yeah. You know what? I don't think I'm going to find Sue if I go walking. No. I feel Sue, like Sue, I understand Sue, the framing I enough. Yes. When people are like, go home and sleep, you're just going to go like, alright. Muskox walks on your head. Okay, here we go. Used to getting these in the morning, but... Yeah, exactly. When a muskox walks on your head. This is a story about my friends back when I was living in Greenland. Moosen, Karsten Sir, and a girlfriend to one of them. I can't remember whose girlfriend she was, but she was the nurse from the seaside town where we lived. Went on a fishing trip, travelling away from the ocean and towards the mainland. They went by plane so they could get farther up a cold stream to fish salmon and trout. When you fly there, you agree with the pilot on a pickup time. Once they leave you, you are completely on your own with no means of contact. If you should need any help, you'll have to wait for the pilot to come back days after, if the weather allows it. Moosen and Karsten Sur liked drinking beer and schnapps when fishing. It kept them warm and made the conversation run smoothly in the long hours waiting for a catch. At one point, Karsten had one or two beers too many and needed to sleep before he could join Moosen a bit further up the river. Most of the area was covered with grass and small shrubs, which isn't comfortable to sleep on, but the muskox herds made a lot of small paths close to the water, so Karsten simply laid his beer-heavy head down on one of those and soon fell asleep. You've probably already guessed what happened next. The herd started walking down from the mountainside to drink, and one of the muskoxen, not knowing that their path was also now the perfect bed for Karsten's head, accidentally stepped a bit on his forehead. The muskox did not mean to step on the drunk sleeping Karsten, so as soon as it felt Karsten under its hoof, the muskox is actually a sheep, it stepped aside leaving Karsten wide awake with only a mild concussion and a deep tangle in his forehead. Karsten was bleeding heavily, and it was going to be another three or four days before they would be picked up by the pilot. Luckily, they had the girlfriend nurse with them, but she felt the wound was a bit more than her training could cover. However, Moosen was a butcher, and he thought fixing Karsten's head could be easily done with his experience of bleeding meats and all the schnapps now warming his stomach. He broke the barb off of a small hook meant for fishing salmon. Then he gave Karsten the rest of the schnapps as a painkiller, even though that meant no more schnapps for the remaining four days. And while the nurse kept Karsten's head still, Moosen very delicately sewed Karsten's forehead back together. Days later, when they were back in town, Karsten went to the doctor, who was so impressed with the sewing skills of Moosen that he let the stitches stay until the wound had closed. I think Moosen told me this story, because he was very proud of the work he did on Karsten, leaving Karsten with only a thin scar. Well. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. 
I mean, fitting fitting that this is a day with uh, Sue the Booze Hound, because while I don't have uh, Ingrid dogs today, I do have some booze. Uh, okay, Figured nice. it would be fitting for the final stream. Mm, that was fun. Yeah, I've got uh, some whiskey and coke, my standard tipple these days. Uh, eh, what whiskey have you got? It's actually, so this is kind of sacrilege, but it's like a, a really fancy one. It was mm -hmm. given to me by like work colleagues. I think it's called Bruchladich. Um, okay. Progressive Heb Hebridian Distillers. Yeah, it sounds um, very nice. It's the kind of thing that you'd get told off for mixing with Coke, but uh, I'm weak. I mean, um, I'm I'm holding my ju I'm keeping my judgments inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a whiskey fan, but wow, no I'm also a, I'm also a firm believer. Of you, you you just do things your way, so yeah. I just unfortunately I simply cannot take like neat drink. It just makes yeah. me gag. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's totally fair. No I dream, kid. Okay. Like, that's all. Yeah, yes, yeah, no dream, yeah. I think Chapter 3 has most of my uh, favourite music. Actually, I love this song as well. Mm. I can't remember if they would play this in another part of the game, but... It doesn't feel like it's been used before, at least. Um, I think maybe it's just for... Or is it maybe a variation on one of the things before? I think it's like... Yeah, it's the... I think it's the... We, you hear this song, with the, it's the Anna, Anna song. But it's like in this like kind of like a uh, like sadder kind of scale, like more yes, like but a... I'm recognizing some of the motifs here. Yeah. Is this another? What's yeah, this a reference be... to? <laughs> oh, the the barrel? No, no, no. That's just. <laughs> that's... I just feel like all big video games should have a barrel on it at some point. Oh no, I meant that the noise is... comb uh, oh, flyer. No. Oh, sorry. Yes. Do you know what I was doing? I was um. Oh, you were watching the stream rather than the yes, Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, in case I missed any comments from Joe. Um, no, um, uh, the noise comp poster is, um, so, like, a, you may notice that they, like, after it's hot dog, like my poster, there is a, a an interact with something small from every member of the team who worked on it. Noise comb is the alias of our intern, Mikkel, who, um, designed Gelk Stack and the Afterlives game. And he Sweet. worked for his first like, period, and he is oh, he's also a musician, and he makes music um and like cool little animations under noise comb, and uh, they're really cool. Nice. So I made like a noise comb poster, and that's a, a, a Silisfarker, which is a character which um one of our artists, uh, Karina, um is uh, like her character. So I thought <laughs> it was, like, you just see them fishing, and it's just like okay. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. The the way it looks but, over back over its shoulder yeah, it is it quite looks, unsettling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the way you can look to you is kind of like, uh, yeah, and what? I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Sorry, never mind, carry on. Oh my god, okay, Anders. Enough what, Frig? Please, Anders, no more games. I want to know what's going on. The mysterious bottle stories. The old guy in my house. And now the woman outside the hermit? The voices in the dreams? All of it, what does it mean? I'm sorry, Frig. No! Don't say you don't know. I know you do. Please, just tell me. Frigg. Please, Anders. So, you've been reading the stories, Frigg? Uh, Anders? Someone is telling you some good stories, don't you think? Anders, you're scaring me. Don't be afraid, Frigg. We just have so many stories to tell you. I don't know what that means. The stories we were told, Frigg. Now we're passing them on to you. Sure, stories have an end. But when we tell them to others, they live on forever. Oh, I felt funny there. Frig, you okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Get it? Because we are ghosts. Um, ah. Uh, are you feeling okay? Yep. Well, I am a little thirsty, actually. But what was all that about before? The ghost joke? It was just a joke, Frig. Sorry, I'm not always good at telling them. No, no, it's okay. Why don't we head to the Hermit? Oh yeah, beer time. Great idea, Frigg. Let's go. Well, that was fucking skinnist sinister. <laughs> um, <laughs> Christ. 
it's the uh, uh it's the like it's the kind of like twin like for me it was the kind of the twin peaks by yes. like, the depth of uh of the meta and like you know the fabric between them separate is like you know slowly um twitting. Like, isn't that true? I don't know how much of the uh, Twin Peaks fan uh, you are, but, um... Unfortunately, the... it's not something I've ever, like, I've not, I, I know very little yeah, about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the reference is probably, like, it, it won't really mean much, but there's, a, there's these scenes where a group of the agent, he sees, like, this giant appear, and they have this very dreamlike quality, and, um, that was kind of my whole vibe that I was, like, that I wanted, like, when we had been seen the um... Uh, like a freak confronts and it's like that whole weird like it's, it's kind of like it's, it's still enough in the kind of thing where you, you don't really know if it's just him or if there is something else like not yeah quite. you're not you're not quite sure what you're seeing here like whose yeah, psychosis right. is this yeah I guess that like a point of reference I do know is perfect blue um mm, yes okay yes yeah, there's definitely a little element. There's definitely like a, a flavor of that in like Frick's kind of like you know, um, trying to like, you know, make sense of everything. Self service A. I don't. Hmm. I'm feeling. Okay, normal C. The way the way Beth was standing there staring into space freaked me out. I was like, Am I going to yeah. talk to her and her neck's going to snap and she'll run at the screen or something? <laughs> Like, is this the dream? Is this the dream we yeah, thought it, we didn't it, have? It, 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 where are things going to, like, yeah, yeah, I completely get what you mean. No, um... This is... A particular, like, this is, like, one of the set pieces we, uh, we worked on, I think, like, from, from very early on in the production, which we kind of, like, you know... Yeah... I think and, I know uh, where this is going. Yeah. Yep, that's what I expected. Mm -hmm. Try not to uh, spoil it before. Oh yeah. I love I love when you get like these shifts in perspective and you get to play as a different character. It's such a little mm. thing in games, but it gives it such a particular feel. Mm. I'm glad you think so. It's funny because at the beginning, so we had this like a uh, obviously dialogue and things were different. Um, mm. and uh, thing, but this was part of our showcase piece that went on like a vertical slice uh... with its flashback, and a lot of people found it actually quite because you didn't. Reason that uh, how short the demo was, um, you didn't have enough time to really familiarize yourself with the characters and understand everything. So when you came to the scene with uh, Beth, people were just suddenly like, "Oh, like we've teleported," or like we're now like something. It was quite funny that people didn't under. It was hard to convey the idea of like, "No, yeah. no, this is like a flashback." <laughs> this beard does smell a little like piss. Wow, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I don't know uh, how worth it is to hang clothes out when it's snowing, but Sorry. you do you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. I did have a housemate who, like, was absolutely adamant on hanging out clothes outside no matter the weather, even if it was raining. Like, she would, oh, even put, them, raining, she okay. would put them on, like, she would at least put them on a clothes horse, like, under, like, an awning or something, but it's still, like, the air's going to be so damp. Yeah. It's just not going to yeah, do yeah, anything. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a, a long time. <laughs> Oh fuck yeah! Oh Christ! Good fucking evening to you all. Got my limb sip this time. Oh my god, he's really not fucking around. Who are you? Less of the dumbass questions, please. Beth, just do as they say. Uh, looks like you found him, Leroy. Victor, Leroy, I know why you're here. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. Can we go somewhere and talk about this? Just not in front of my family, please. Hey, Leroy, he's saying he's sorry. Well, I don't give a goddamn. He killed Donnie, and I am not fucking happy about it. Uh, it's true. He ain't happy about it. 
Donnie owed Leroy a lot of money, you know. I didn't know, okay? How could I have known? I'm sorry. Look, I had no choice. You have to believe me. It was self-defense. They're talking about back when George was in prison. Oh, George. Look, I can pay you what he owed you. Just give me some time. You fucking what? You think I'm an idiot? Oh my god. You think you can just talk your way out of this? Whoa. What the fuck, Leroy? Fuck, I'm sorry. Please, I'm so sorry. Just, just let my family go. Come on, Leroy. Let's think about this. I thought we were just going to rough George up a little. Fucking hell, you two. I'm not a complete monster. But you know how it is. I don't like getting fucked over. You think I want people calling me soft like you, Victor? Fuck no. Let's just call it an ear for an ear. Damn it, Leroy! George! Daddy! Girls, I'm so sorry. Mum, do something! Jesus, okay. God, yeah, that's fucking heavy. Mm. Yeah, it's still even now, like, uh, still watching it, it still gives me the heebie jeebies. It was, uh, yeah, we, we, it's definitely the, the thing we spent the most time on, I think, mm -hmm. in the game. Like, because uh, it was early in the development when we worked on this story, like, at part anyway. Yeah. And then the gameplay and stuff, and, you know, it was one of the big questions of, like, okay, you have this game, we're doing, like, taking these stories, uh, and looking stories and turning them into, like, gameplay, and how to do that in a way which doesn't feel, um, that doesn't feel like, exploitive, you know what I mean? Or like, yes. Because one of the whole things was, it, it, like, like very early on, it was kind of like, okay, so what if you're playing as George, and you're, like, having to, like, try and talk your way out of it, and I thought, well, that's, like, we're like, no, because... Yeah, because it ends one way. It ends one way, so then to do that just feels dishonest, right? To mm. give the player to, like, have you play that part, and it's like, well... And it, so that's why we really wanted to focus on the idea of, like, what if the gameplay is just, um... What if it is uh, expression based? Yeah. So it's like you know the outcome is going to like, but um, but at least you get to have a part to like you know um, reflect um, on what happens in a way. And it's really nice how it ties into the singing mini game you had at the start with Beth. Yes. Like it well, makes cause, sense. Cause, yes, because the whole reason we had that was because um actually one of the words we were designing this is that when players hadn't played it for the first time, there was definitely a, a, a lack of, like, there was some, like, hesitation of knowing how to, like, because a lot of time in games, it's usually skill-based. Yeah. Having it designed in a way, like, hey, you can just play around with this, and, um, uh, 
I'll stop talking in a second when you talk to. Mm. But, um, I'll give you time to finish your thought. You know, if it, well, just, just the idea, because, you know, uh, if it's like skill based and that kind of stuff, so a lot, of, especially like rhythm based games, a lot of people, when they first when we were first testing it, didn't understand it. So that's why we did the karaoke game earlier yeah. on. It's a one mini game that repeats in two iterative forms because we want to basically teach you, hey, you can just express yourself. You can just have fun with this. Yeah, and then, yeah. once, then when it comes around to this one, you're not then. Because the thing is, we really want you to be in the moment. We don't want you to go be going yes. what we're supposed to do. So you don't want them to uh, be solving that problem while also exactly, processing exactly. this moment of the story. You just want them to exactly, be there. Exactly. Exactly. That's yes. really clever. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm definitely happy if I have that. Like, uh, I feel I feel like we got it. At least that we did. We did yes. it the best we could. I can hear it from the man himself now. Let me tell you about when George and you. George, han var øh, han døde has op i nogle øh, skove på nogle bjergesider øh, for at forsørge hans øh, kone og hans datter. Og så en dag så havde øh, politiet spottet ham på en helikopteroverflyvning, og han blev øh, stillet for en dommer og dømt til flere år i fængsel. Og mens han var i fængsel, der gjorde han nogle tjenester for, nogle, øh, for en motorcykelbande for at få beskyttelse inde i fængslet, mens han var der. Men øh, en dag kom, hvor han blev fri, og han tog hjem til øh, hans kone og datter og levede en, øh, en stille, lidt fattig tilværelse øh, med dem i noget tid efter, han var blevet løsladt. Øh, men så en dag, der kunne øh, naboerne høre, at der var motorcykelstøj på øh, de små veje igennem skoven op ad bjergsiderne. Så motorcykelstøjen den stoppede inde ved Georges hus. Og der havde motorcykelbanden gået ind i huset og taget George og hans kone og hans datter ud på gårdspladsen. De havde bundet dem til nogle pæle, der stod ved deres veranda. Og uden videre taget en shotgun op til hovedet af, af George og, og skudt hovedet af ham. Og så var de kørt igen. Imens så hang Georges krop livløs fra hans pæl, mens at moren og datteren stod bundet øh, efterladt på gårdspladsen. Jeg mødte enken og datteren øh, på en bar en sen aftentime, hvor øh, datteren, der nu var en voksen kvinde, øh, var med ude hendes mor i byen. Og, øh, og sidst jeg fik jeg taget mig mod til at for, for spørge dem om den historie, jeg havde hørt, den var, var sand. Og moren hun genfortalte øh, historien øh, nogenlunde, som jeg havde hørt den. Og da hun var færdig, så sad datteren og og stirrede lidt tomt ud i luften foran sig, hvor efter hun sagde, at uh, The day that he die, I never forget. God, that's even more gruesome than what was yeah. in the game. Fuck. kind of interesting how i mean obviously it's derived from the um the story that that whole episode was modeled on but the fact that um like leroy wasn't just doing it out of like petty bloodlust or something he, he was saying it was an eye for an eye and i was actually mm -hmm. thinking after last time um how he kind of like was drawing the line at raising hands against his brother um mm -hmm kind like just about and how with with that kind of with that kind of person i feel like often their their sort of their last sort of uh limit is like tribalism like you know yeah. members of the in group like their family their closest friends and it's kind of interesting how even leroy is like humanized in that way a little bit yeah like it's not arbitrary uh, his his violence mm-hmm yeah, because there's always, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, if people have, like, I think everyone to a certain degree, like, all different people, they all, there's still a code in a way. Like, I mean, people's codes can be different. It's not mm -hmm. like a universal. I mean, like, we might follow, yeah, like, a universal one of, like, like, you know, what we would be basically decency. But for some other people, there's some things, but, like, you know, I think even people who are, you know, at heart, like, generally kind of, like, 
I don't know, the corrupt's not the word, right word, but you know, like who, 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 who have those dark sensibilities of like that lack mm. of empathy. I think even still, like there's something which tethers them to. Cause I, th- I think like it, like people who do bad things, it's not they're they're, they're really like nihilistic. It's not usually in the same terms of like I don't care about anything. It's just more like I have my priorities and this kind of set away, and everything that's below that threshold, threshold, yeah. that's what I don't care about. Yeah, exactly. This is a uh, chapter four. No bottle. No bottle. Bottle stop. Mm. Oops. I don't like the achievement I just got. It was called Bobby's obituary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in for a treat, I guess. I will say, I will, I will say this. We're not monsters. <laughs> okay, Sue's alive at least. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh... This obituary is to say goodbye to our beauti- beautifulest Bobby, because if it's written on paper, it's got to mean it's important. Bobby was the sexy woman who served us beer, but she was also the ray of rare sun on this pissing rock sitting in the cold sea. We'll miss her and we'll be lost without her. Goodbye, sweet mistress of the frothy, beer-soaked night. Sue, this is an obituary! <laughs> uh... Oh my god, Sue... The melodrama. <laughs> All right, I guess. I guess that logic works. Let's go. That logic works. Yeah. Come on, you come in here too. <laughs> Life ain't easy for a girl named Sue. What does that mean? <laughs> That was asked, asked me more, like, more to the line, like, the reference to the Johnny Cash song, like, more to the, just to, uh... Ah, uh, that's not, that's also not a reference, I understand. <laughs> well, there's a, it's, there's a song by Johnny Cash, which is, um, uh, which is all about a boy named Sue, and it's all about how, like, the, uh, this guy called Sue's dad <sighs> named him Sue. Oh, I think, I think I may have heard you. bits of that then, yeah. Yes. So then it was like, a fun little, like, thing about it, because obviously Sue's a girl, but it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> it's not, not easy being called Sue. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's a fake. Uh, like, so yeah. I, I, I just I just really enjoyed this concept, the idea of the fake. Because like, you've already been through all these like upsets and stuff, you know? And then it's just the idea of, oh, it's a fake. It's a, a fake yeah. bitch word. Ugh. Part of the reason was when we were developing it, this part of the the game, because we knew we knew that it was going to be, uh, the see it was like because it's based on a true story of someone from one, one of these towns where they went away and started drinking at another. These go always go to this one pub and then they stopped coming and went and like no one had seen them for a while, so they assumed oh if they're not coming to the pub they must be dead, so they put an obituary <laughs> in the local newspaper. And then like you know a, a while was later, a while later they found out no they're just going to go to a different bar, and everyone was <laughs> like. Oh shit! So, um, <laughs> which is just such a, it's like such a great one of those that's very brilliant, great, like uh, local community kind of uh, tales. And when we were like, the, so we we knew when we were developing the story, like we're gonna have like so uh, Bobby would be the one that disappear and like that she'll come back. But then at first we had it that we didn't have the fake uh, uh, like the fake funeral in yet. Yeah. And then I was suddenly like, like it doesn't make any sense because. Um, Yeppy goes missing and everyone freaks out in one day and then Bobby went missing at first and no one was just like because uh, like we as developers because we knew it wasn't anything to worry about we yeah. didn't really make anyone else stress and then I was like so no one's going to be relaxed like they're all going to be really freaking out if they think that Bobby's like gone so I thought they have to all be in on it then like everyone including us as developers we have to all be in on the idea yeah. that um 
Bobby's like fine, but it, so it's all just basically like Sue's the only one who uh yeah who doesn't yeah. So it was a fun way of trying to balance that out because I think at this point in the game as well you're all, you're definitely like no more like I'm I'm done like don't don't do this to me. Yeah, but also you're like completely ready to accept the yes, fakeness yeah. of this. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It just seems like that's something that they would do. I mean, at the same time, you erase the whole, like, you know, the, the absence of Anus. So it's not like it's completely, yeah. um, without, uh... Not without tension. Uh, yes. I'm grieving here, freak. <laughs> that's going to be my answer now to whenever anyone presents me with a mildly inconvenient problem. I'm grieving. <laughs> It's Tuesday. <laughs> this is Sue at our absolute best, where it's just like completely untethered now, like yeah, yeah. going all, all no hose. But like, I mean, I think for me, like this whole scene, like coming into the end game, like I had a lot of fun with the dialogue and stuff. Being, like with, for me, there was just a lot of stuff to just kind of chew on, just to kind of be like, well, we're kind of into the end game, so we can kind of just notch everything up a little bit, and everyone's yeah. kind of like, like little quirks can just come out full, full like no with no uh fear of like having to like balance it out afterwards yes i feel like wearing shoes made of <laughs> shit wow the prose coming from this woman <laughs> she could make you feel like you weren't wearing shoes <laughs> it is kind of freeing to not wear shoes i tell you what no, absolutely no, i went on the to... one one Sorry, time yeah. i remember going to chessington world of adventures and I think the ride was the samurai or something. The one that, like, just swings you around on a big arm. And for some reason, people were just taking their shoes off to go on it. So I did the same, and it was quite freeing. <laughs> I love these other people doing it. You're like, I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, oh, fuck. I mean, I think... Like, oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> well, if it isn't another uh, sad-ass party. <laughs> what, did another one of you fucks bite the bullet? <laughs> Oh, Leroy, looks like they ain't too happy to see you. Get out. I beg your fucking pardon. What did you just say to me? I said, get out. We're saying goodbye to the fucking love of my life. And you as sure were not fucking invited. So get the fuck out. Oh god, okay. I mean, she was able to handle him last time, but another bottle to the head might yeah. split her open. Yeah, definitely true. I don't think it worked for it the second time. Come on, Victor, do your thing. <laughs> Sue, so, I'm sorry. I am so fucking sorry. But are you? Are you telling me what to do? Sue, so just come back over here. Yeah, come on, Sue, it's okay. I think I've just about fucking had it. Has everyone lost their shitting minds? Who do you all think you are? Get the fuck out hmm that's funny <laughs> oh my but lady i gotta tell you you are so fucking dead oh jesus okay <laughs> the fuck is this hands now you what final warning fuck i don't fucking believe this one of you shits talked you're a hard man to find, Leroy Brown. But we've been patient. Very patient. Sorry, folks. No need to be alarmed. We're from the mainland police force. We'll take it from here. Where's Officer Olsen? Um, uh, I'm here, ma'am. Nice work on the tip-off. Wait, what? I mean, uh, you're welcome. We've been after this asshole for quite some time. So you really did us a favour. Come on, let's get him out of here. The boat's waiting. Wait! Okay. Victor, fucking do something. It's done, Leroy. What? Why you? You ungrateful son of a bitch. I said move. I'll fucking kill all of you. You hear me? All of you. Keep up the good work, Officer Olsen. Good day to the rest of you. Oh, thank oh, God. Gun. <laughs> that was unexpected. Get the fuck out of here, in. Yeah, get out, you slimy bastard. Yeah. 
You were just a side character. <laughs> to, to yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear your voice, just like, you know, that. Like, Tony. Uh, who's, who's it in that voice? It, it, um, Iago. Uh, from, yes. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's even the same color. Yes. Oh, I should have given him a Gil Gil Gilbert Gottfried voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was like, so it's obviously a bit of a. I mean, they could go into the explanations of it here, but. Um... <laughs> they mentioned me specifically. Wow. That's fraud. Okay, sure. You're not one to talk. <laughs> yeah. Was definitely crusty. Yeah. Marge is right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe some cops are mod uh, sometimes not bastards. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it was a hard. I mean, it was a hard balance because one of the things was having it, but it was just a clean. Oh, here we go. In his. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I, I do know what you mean. Like, that's... Yeah. You don't want to actually have to, like, write the other characters doing what? Like, kicking him out oh. on a boat, tying him up, actually killing him? Oh, well, exactly. I mean, that was the thing, because once we were developing, we were kind of like, there was the Leroy problem of, like, what are we going to do with Leroy? And then first we were, I so said, this guy is so fucked up. Like, and there was the idea of, like, that we should, maybe we should come. Um, but then it was kind of like, so much of it just, it didn't, it didn't sit right. Like, you know, because... It just felt like too much of a, you know, like, to push in that point, like, you know, someone like Beth, it felt like kind of like unfair, especially for someone like Beth mm. who suffered so much, like losing George and like having this kind of monster sit around that, you know, not that killing someone's easy, but just that, that, that to be the solution between themselves to, mm. to like take that. And also then like, what does that mean? Like, are we saying that, you know, if someone is, is as bad as they were, then it's not that we're trying to moralize in this story at all, but you know, it's still just like, is that, is that the kind of story you want to tell? One where like yeah. the solution is killing someone, you know, like exactly. this game approach, yeah. the story approaches death in a specific way. Exactly. And and like, obviously, I am a person who would not be above saying that some people might deserve to die, but like, mm. you're telling you're telling us a, a specific narrative here, you know, yeah. and you don't necessarily want that to be the takeaway. Exactly, in um, yeah, it was just a thing where it became over like it was hard because we definitely had to have some conclusion. And for me, the the direct machina of like having these police, like for me, I enjoyed the the kind of like, at least the dynamic of like the suggestion of the the, the social state, like the the, yes. the way that they, the world building of this place works. But there is this other kind of like entity outside of it, which apparently has a police force, but just like you know, who. On the odd occasion, will we show up and arrest the scumbag like a, a thing? But otherwise, they're just pretty much unseen, which just kind of feels like. Yeah, like generally, they're just not going to bother. No. Oh god. Okay. Oh god. Give it absence. Yeah. Dear Frig, sorry that I didn't get to say goodbye, but I was just so excited I couldn't wait. I've decided it's time to go to the next afterlife. I want to meet my parents and see Clumbin again. I'm sorry we'll be away from each other for a while, but I promise I'll wait in the next afterlife for you. In the meantime, we'll always have our stories together. Thanks for everything, Frigg. P.S. You can have all my rock friends. Oh god. What does that mean? I already floated yeah. this idea last time, come on. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're pretty, you're pretty, it was pretty, uh, pretty spawned with that, to be honest. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, let's see where he's gone. Hello. Salty dog. Don't get the wrong idea here, Ingrid. <laughs> like... Yeah. I know Frigg's been asking after Anders all day, but it's not like that. She just wants to know about the fucking bottles. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Ooh, different, uh, different Marge outfit. Yeah, well, you, she's only ever been inside all the time. Yeah. They've all, they've all got inside and outside outfits. <sighs> Oh. <laughs> Couldn't resist the idea to get one last kind of like. Just yeah. <laughs> but very fitting of them as well. Like you know, just that they started in that line of like mushy, but also um. They're just gonna needle you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Clara's gonna fucking shoot me. <laughs> Just in the back of the head. Yeah, it's definitely it's got a vibe to it. Yeah. Oh, and the boat's finished. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't suppose, uh, no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't expecting oh, that. I mean, that would have been that would have been superb. Like you can actually go in and then there is there's the boat. That's what I thought. Yeah. Ooh, everything's in colour. Mm. It's kind of weird how you take some to realise, right? And you're like, oh yeah, shit. Yeah. I just want to point out, so, um, that song was sang by uh, Freak. Not obviously the Freak who did the yeah, yeah. song, but the uh, Freak of... Uh, still, there's that like, meta-tangible link between the two, so that's kind of fun. Hey, Freak. 
Ej, fri. Prøv at se. Jeg får dig til at løbe ind i spillet. Joe is absolutely on the nose with that analysis. Yeah, that's, yeah, very... <laughs> that's a very good chart. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's... I don't think anyone else in the uh, in the team uh, had that idea, but I definitely, I definitely was thinking of those kind of vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a cool way to end it. You're really just kind of driving the like tall tales thing, like. On right, mm. you don't know how much it's real, how much it's just a story. Yeah, but it felt like it felt in the, the more we went on, it just felt like that was the only way to kind of end it because yes, because I mean, like, like I mentioned before, but the thing with Frank is like a kind of like an avatar. Mm. So she didn't, she hasn't got like an art. It's not like it would feel weird if it was just like the game ended. Was just like okay, I'm going home now. Yeah. See you later. You'd just be a bit like okay, <laughs> sure. Like you, there's not not really there's not really something that you know that like Frank's going home to or like something waiting for it. It's more about like okay, what are they uh, what is the the, the 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 whole idea of the game? Like, like it's basically at the end of the game is just about stories. Yes. So exactly. uh, I think we're going to think this is where like yeah, doing the the, the, the Serpentine's tale kind of thing. And then you know, uh, third impact happens and. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you so much. For, uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was fun. It was. That was really good. It was really nice. I love playing it through, and I love playing it through with you, Murray. Yeah, thanks. I hope, I hope it wasn't too weird for your experience, like having someone like talking over it. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I mean, it it definitely changes it, but I think it definitely adds yeah. something. And so it's, it's a, I'm definitely like flexing. The fact that, oh, I know game developer friends it means I get to have some insider knowledge, get to have a little extra bit of fun. I think that, I think that was really, I think it was really fun. It was actually like, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was actually fun sitting through it and just kind of like, you know. Getting to see it bit by like, beat by beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just went seeing the record a little bit, just talking about it. Mm. Like, uh, I mean, it was definitely because for me, it was like, you know what I mean? I worked this big kid, but it was the first production I worked on beginning to end, so I think it's got like a, there's a lot of raw kind of like stuff in there for me where I'm like watching it where I'm just kind of like even to where I am now, like you know, stuff I'm mm. doing now, I'm kind of like thinking about stuff differently, so it's definitely an interesting experience. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, so I, had you like not played through it just like as a playthrough yourself since the release? Since the release? I think now, I probably did, because I did a lot of testing, I was doing a lot of testing around about the release, like doing a lot of like, even when it came out, just going, going through and just making, doing bug checks just in case, like um, mm. a few weeks where just like, you know, uh, like, but I think it's, it, it's beyond the promo stuff, I haven't sat down and actually gone beginning to end, like definitely not in like yeah. a, a few, for, for a while, like, not, not in this kind of experience, not where 
there wasn't an ulterior motive in me where to be like I'm doing this to do this thing or whatever but instead um yeah like like testing basically right yeah exactly yeah so i think it's a different thing playing it for like seeing it play out for the sake of it just being played yeah because i was going to ask like what you guys did for testing and triple topping because on tangle tower the plan was just like yeah. well we've got like a bunch of team members we'll just like give team members builds like at various points to test and like i was at some at one point going to do that but it just kind of didn't happen um adam and tom got like their sister maddie to, to do a test and a couple of other people but like i had not played the game at all until it released oh, wow. and like i bought it okay that's so that was nice. quite something yeah that must have been weird especially animating so much of it and then not really yeah. seeing it all I had seen I had seen bits in situ oh, of course, of course. from yeah, 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 yeah. just standing over over Adam's shoulder, but I hadn't played yes. it. So did you when you with the animation did you work like um is is Tango Terra made in Unity? Yes, it is made yes. in Unity. The animation's done in, in, in Flash. Okay, in Flash, and then were you were you working at all in Unity or were you just like um working I, in Flash? I didn't yeah, I did not touch Unity at any point. Um okay, okay. again there was like we were thinking at some point maybe like we'd get to a place where I'd they'd like give me the tools to just quickly like compile a build to test things in it, but it 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 never really needed to happen that way. Like Tom's tools that he he had and had also developed himself were just like so good at streamlining the process. Um, and they and like Tom and Adam were so organized with knowing what they needed and the steps we needed to take that it just wasn't necessary. Like I was able to just do my animation in flash package it up within the flash file in like the specific way that uh tom's tools needed it to process it to bring it into unity um or technically to turn it into a sprite sheet which then gets brought into unity um and it will just it just worked pretty smoothly to be honest mm. yeah i mean that makes so much sense i mean definitely like it's one of the things that we're doing for the next project is to work more uh, for all this to kind of work more in unity to kind of um yeah yeah, but like during Welcome to Elk, it was one of those things where we were like, oh, maybe we'll do this. And then we had that once you kind of have a kind of a pipeline or a workflow, you kind of just go, well, exactly. this is working. So, and like we're, we're, we're managing, so let's just do that. Um, yeah, exactly yeah, that. Unity, I mean, Unity cool. does seem very powerful, though. I know that um, I was oh, yeah, doing yeah, yeah. the I was doing the animation in Flash, but the way uh, Adam was like laying out the conversations was all yeah. in Unity. Um, mm -hmm. it, and it seems Unity has like ex very, very like intuitive and powerful timeline tools. Um, yes, it, it, it's got better as well. They've added more. Um, uh, like the Joe was just saying, Adam's been doing yeah. tons more stuff in Unity, and like it's. Uh, I'm not surprised because um, they've been improving their animation tools in it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they've been uh, trying to implement because we were at one point we were looking at some third party uh like some plug-in stuff for it and then we were like well unity's actually updating their stuff so yes we should do and our our animator uh, and always our new project she likes to work with tune boom mm. uh but she's also would like because like because it's the whole thing about you know how to export stuff and the easier of it is stuff that she's actually finding and working with unity and actually being like okay like this this can work so i think yeah. it's going to be it's going to be a combination because obviously Twin Boom still her like kind of like her, her, her comfort place, but uh, it's kind of it's, yeah, it's, I, I know Toon Boom. I I know Toon Boom does like have game dev tools in it. I think it you can like yes. use the the bone systems and like export them into game engines or something. But it's not that's not something I've ever touched within it. It's not uh, my wheelhouse. It's, it's, it's just about learning. Like it's one of those whole weird things. But depending on the way you're making your game, it's just like or like the programming you're using it's just like okay like even though you have some of those functionalities it's like how how easy is it to make these things talk together or is it going yes. to be it's, it's more like finding because i mean for instance for us it's definitely if you can do it in unity that's great because then you're like everything's already in the one kind of house because they're obviously yeah. built each other um you mentioned you talked about testing testing was like we did like a lot of like one of the ways we tested a bunch of stuff was doing all the showcasing so we use that as basically a massive like test um not not for bugs but for more um design uh, yeah. principle okay how are people reacting to stuff and are people like this but then we did like um a beta test we did like um a shout out and we put a survey and we 
uh, basically got a bunch of like uh, people who were signed up for beta testing and uh, by doing so they got like you know um, a kind of swag bag and like access to the game and that kind of stuff that for this meant they were playing like it was it was pretty much a nearly complete game when they played yeah. it um it was just an, an interesting way to see that okay like one for bugs especially also for, for localizations because we shipped with six languages i think to begin with so mm. the ones we couldn't speak we tried to find people from different languages because like for instance one or two like then because the, the studio who uh, translated it were a danish um studio that were called um character really nice people um they uh like apparently it's a shame because i don't speak um a Danish at all. Uh, I mean, I speak well. I know a few phrases, but um, everyone from Denmark told me the, the Danish translation is actually really good. Like they've mm-hmm. really done a great job of capturing the because because the way I wrote it, like um. What's Danish lot, for crappers? Well, you know stuff like that. I don't know, but like, <laughs> I know, I know the, the spirit of things. They actually did a really good translation of um making it all like you know so things didn't feel kind of like Google translated if you put yes. it that way. So with the beta testing, it was really good to like get like for instance like French like hey, when French testers were like, no, that's that is wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they need to change that. Um, the I mean like for instance I mentioned before, but the, like, some of the best feedback we got was about and a few of the strong reactions to the Clumbin killing Clumbin game. Yeah. Where it was before just like I do not want to have to kill this rabbit, which made us go, okay we will put a choice in that you'd have to do it because like we got this feedback because that's the kind of stuff that i think testing internally like we're all like yeah we're fine with this yeah <laughs> we put it in the game so we're fine so i think that's the kind of stuff that we had to make sure we we didn't miss but but also we did a lot of testing like um the weeks leading up to it there was lots of i was like finding out how to get through the game it like Great. I was getting through, like I could get through the game like beginning to end like speed running it like you know I think just over an hour or, yeah. or, or, or like just like hammering like you know all the text we've, we've got like some more uh, dev tools like, you know for um skipping the text super fast yeah yeah um, like any stuff so I assume uh, that's probably standard I know Adam did a similar yeah. sort of thing with Tangle Tower just to test it just to say yeah definitely AGDQ uh, 2022 welcome to Elk speed run maybe maybe they'll yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. find some weird skip. <laughs> They'll, they'll find the clump oh, and okay. skip. There'll, there'll definitely be some weird like things you could do. <laughs> you are, I think, like, especially some clippings and that kind of stuff. That yeah, you get, we found we already found like through the process there were sometimes where like you get into. I remember like in the the early, the very early on, um, when the first uh, builds we did, um, we we're putting things together and we had Anas in there, and you'd go to meet Anas and you would go to the pub together and he would follow you. So when he would follow you, but they, he had like his own collider, and there was actually a way that he could trap you. That if you were walking up, like you know, um, this thing, that he, because he's following you, you would yes. just be stuck there. Really creepy situation where you'd be on this, like, <laughs> um, and, and like Anas would just be there, like stuck staring at you. You'd be kind of like Anas, like let me, let me out. And he would move, and you'd be like, oh, <laughs> like this. Yeah, um, that's that's very <laughs> like that's very like creepy pasta, like uh, yeah, the yeah, Majora's exactly, Mask yeah. statue kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. But it's fun. I mean, it's always fun when you get like a weird mistakes like that with things. Um, and of course, like there's always stuff that you want to change. Like even watching it now, there's like I, I just remember my list of like my uh, my shopping list of oh these are things that I would change if I could go back in time. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about that. Yeah. God, I yeah. know what you mean. <laughs> I think everyone everyone has those. I there's think a, there's like yeah, like some you kind of just have to reach a point where you just need to be at peace with things. <laughs> Absolutely. You just, I, mean, I think, yeah, like, I mean, you just, there's a de- things have deadlines and things yeah. go, and I think, you know, um, and it's always that weird thing of, like, how there's stuff that you notice that, like, no one else notices. Yes. Like, no one else kind of goes, but that, for me, I'm like, I zoom, like, I mean, my favorite thing is the way that my, because this game is very, like, drawn, like, a lot of this stuff, the, the basis of it was just drawn from the way that I kind of, like, my drawing style. Yeah. And, some of the interiors so my like i draw very wonky like in my, my perspectives are like usually mm-hmm. like the way that i do so what was fun was so because i was the only person drawing so the hermit bar some of the perspectives in that bar are completely like insane yes. but my whole magic is that what um what, what i've learned to do is rather than getting better at drawing perspective i've got better at like taking it like yes. put things in the right way to kind of like cover all the things but then it was fun when 
then having new other artists come onto the project and showing it to them, and then me having to explain this process, it just made me realize how insane I am. Like, yeah. <laughs> these things, and they're like, oh yeah, if you look at it this way, it none of it makes sense. But I thought that was trying to go to them, but it does make sense. You just have to make it make. Sense. You've got to. It's got to have. You've got to have like internal rules that you can understand. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah, it, yeah. It, it may not make sense in terms of like the physical world, but it makes its own yeah. sense. Yes, it, like you have to leave, you have, for me, it's like if you can make a consistent world. Like I mean, mm. my, my number one rule is like putting things in as long as nothing's ever breaking. Like if something's like grabbing your attention in a way, which is exactly, like, it, like it's, it's focal point and it's kind of like okay, then that's that's the issue. Not that the not the, uh, yeah yeah the wall was put at a forty degree angle into like this weird like ninety degree like kind of uh, shift. It's more if um, that painting over there is a little bit too detailed and you're looking at it too much. Okay, exactly. that needs to go. Or like the perspective's yeah. too good on that thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's true. Like that's not even a yeah. joke. Like you've got a no, like nothing yeah, nothing in the game felt wrong within the world. Like it definitely yeah. you definitely made a world that felt like it had its own rules and that made sense yeah. in that way. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it was great. It was amazing because the the things which I loved the most, like the with the ferry at the beginning, mm. uh, Mr. Bo's house, and the workshop, Jan's workshop that was drawn by um an artist called Dennis, who I've mentioned before, and mm. he was great because he was the first artist to work alongside me on uh, Welcome to Elk, and he was just great, like taking my like rough style and stuff like that, but then creating these more like particular like technical set pieces. Mm. But then it was funny watching him, like knowing that he could draw it, like all accurately but then having to kind of do it in a way where you would draw it right and then have to kind of make it wrong a little bit to yes. just make sure it sit with all my stuff and i'd be like inside and just feeling guilty going like oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any uh any artist who comes onto a project has to deal with that kind of thing <laughs> oh, absolutely yes um yeah but that's it yeah okay uh how do you think the like um you enjoyed it yes i did um i mean i've played plenty of like very story focused narratively driven games but that mm. was definitely and, I, and I, i've played my fair share of like games that get very meta with narrative um but nothing mm. that sort of addressed it in that explicit way um mm. that like was very much about like it's not just oh is this breaking into the real world it's like this is this a story or is this is, is this a story or is this a story you know <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, know, I know exactly what you mean it's like uh and it's funny because we didn't really know that that's what we were doing at first yeah because you know at first it was like there's these cool stories and we wanted to feel like anecdotal in that kind of way so let's yes. you know and then when working on it because the weird thing about it was like it's a gift in one way of having i think i mentioned this before but it's a gift having like this material like material that's already there like we already know like that you know the, the thing with um the the, the muscle standing on the head like you know or the elk whatever but we have like stuff like that happening at the obituary story and then like so on the one hand it was like a blessing to have that material already like there for you to access but also at the same time then going how to how to string all these together what like you know mm. what like, and, at first trying to find like is there a theme like is it death or is it like you know but then kind of realizing no like they, they kind of like the theme of these stories is that they are stories like exactly. that that's in the, they're all stories that you would kind of tell over a drink in a bar or like you would like um have they have that kind of quality i mean that's what i love the muscle standing in the head one and also the obituary one because mm. they have that kind of quality there's something you'd really believe someone telling you at a pub yeah yeah you just be like, yeah, that and, and several of them have like that kind of second, third hand quality to them. Yes. Like, uh, yeah. you know, like I heard this story from these people about this guy and his wife and child, and then eventually I met the wife and child and heard it from them. Um, mm -hmm. It's like they're, they're stories that are being passed along. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what it's kind of like. That's kind of the whole. And, and, and the fun thing is how those stories do, like, I like the idea that those stories carry on, like, the, mm -hmm. like we're telling them now. And if you were like, for instance, I love the idea that someone was explaining the game and explain one of the stories from the game and in their own way would have a yes, new one, exactly. kind of like, give a new take to it. And how it is that, like, you know, the passing on of, like, tall tales 
and uh, it just keeps like reinforcing the same old. Like they don't, they don't exist in a vacuum. They only exist yeah. as they are told, and they are told yes. in an infinite different number of ways. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yes. That's really it's, yeah, it's really sweet. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you very much for doing this and having me uh, join you. It was great. Yeah, um, we've we've been having murmurings on Twitter. Might have you on the stream again yes. for something oh, completely yeah, I mean, I, different? I would, but we'll I see. I would totally be up for Starcraft. That would be yeah, awesome. <laughs> I have, I have. Uh, I mean, I was reasonably good at Starcraft two in my day. I think okay. I, I was at least like diamond rank, maybe hit master at one point. Okay. But uh, oh, but shit. like. Okay, okay. So I, hit, I still play. I still play like not like a lot, but I still play touch on and off, and I'm only at diamond. Like yeah, like on the hills of diamond. So but like I don't know what the standards are anymore. Like MMR brackets shift and whatever. Like I was yeah, playing cool. StarCraft two in Wings of Liberty days before either of the yeah. expansions. But Brood, like I I I have some like RTS chops basically. So yeah. if I look up I a build, I might be able to be competent yeah. in Brood War to some level. But okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's fun. I, I love the idea of it. I think it would just be jokes. Um, it's like you know. Yeah, exactly. It's such a classic game. What race uh, do you play, by the way? I, I'm. I, I want to see if you can guess. What do you think it would be? Um, I think Zerg. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm also a Zerg, so that's going to be amazing. Yeah, I was going to thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what the funny thing is? I've ne I've barely touched the races. And I've been playing the game, like both StarCraft One and Two, like on and off for like <laughs> over like I don't know how many years now. And it's just in my head where like one of my friends went to me, "Why don't you just play someone else now for a change?" I was like, "No, like, that would just That's be not weird. me." Be not... Like, yeah, it's not. You don't me. understand. It's, not... it's yeah. you have to become a different person to do that. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think <laughs> honestly you do. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I I think it would be fun. It would like it's I just one of those. Think it would. I think that the stakes are low enough, uh, are, are low enough. Like the, the fact that it wouldn't be like you know upsetting. Like to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we've we've had enough of our spills in Splatoon, so. Yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It's just to continue. And I think I think almost like Splatoon, I'd be more like. I'd be more worked up on Splatoon than they would be. No, I think we Starcraft definitely are, are yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Splatoon, we're actually, like, trying to be good. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like we're both saying this secretly, and then it just turns out we play Starcraft, and then it's like, no, I want to win. Yeah, I start the grind tonight, and like. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is just like, I should just maybe, like, open Brood War up. Just, just gotta make, just gotta make sure I, like, have my controls set up properly. Uh, yeah. Make sure that it like I stream it properly. Like yeah, yeah. three weeks later, I'm like S rank <laughs> and <laughs> desperately grinding on the ladder to make sure I can put on a good showing. Uh, I, well, I'm I'm very much game for it. I think it'd be really fun. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess okay. I guess we can end it there. So yes. uh, nice. Murray, thanks no, once okay. again. Yeah, thank you. And I want to do a shout out to Joe, who's been with us every night. We've done he this has. Really thank fun. you, Joe. Yeah, so, uh, I hope you enjoyed it too, Joe. Um, and anyone else who watched. Uh, okay, sick. Thank you. thanks again, Jonathan. Yep. All right, then. Uh, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll speak uh, to you later, bye. Murray. Yes. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, yeah, that was that was Welcome to Elf. That was Murray Summerwolf. Um, I hope that was as enjoyable for, uh, for those watching as it was for me. Um, I plan to do more games at this time slot on this channel. I have some lined up that I want to do, but I don't know exact order. Um, and since I'm doing an outro this time. I'm going to remember to raid. So, uh, you and me, Joe, let's take a trip to the high score club. Raid, uh, I believe Chilipa is doing her truck and logistics stream. Is this working? Yes, it's working. Let's go.
Let's fucking go. Have a good evening.